Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In this video, I'm going to present another example of climate doublespeak. In 2006, the New York Times announced the endless summer, and they said it went hand in hand with polar bears dying in the Arctic as the sea ice shrinks. In 2014, the New York Times announced the end of snow. In 2018, the New York Times announced the demise of the Winter Olympics because global warming was making it too warm to snow. And just a few months ago, Bloomberg once again announced the end of snow. And when it does snow, climate alarmists of course blame it on global warming. A few days before the beginning of summer, they're having snow in Australia. Someone named Richard explained what he believed was going on. It's called disrupted polar vortices and is caused basically by a decrease in the temperature difference between equator and poles, a clear sign of global warming as predicted by modeling. Well, that's a very sciencey sounding explanation. If that's what the experts predicted, then why wasn't the New York Times saying that in February 2014? During February 2014, the Great Lakes were experiencing near record ice cover. The weather was extremely cold. So the people who had been predicting the exact opposite had to think fast and come up with a good ad hoc explanation. Here's a video from 2014 of Obama's science advisor, John Holdren, explaining how record cold is caused by an overheated atmosphere. If you've been hearing that extreme cold spells, like the one that we're having in the United States now, disprove global warming, don't believe it. The fact is that no single weather episode can either prove or disprove global climate change. Climate is the pattern of weather that we observe geographically and over the seasons, and it's described in terms of averages, variations, and probabilities. But a growing body of evidence suggests that the kind of extreme cold being experienced by much of the United States as we speak is a pattern that we can expect to see with increasing frequency as global warming continues. And the reason is this. In the warming world that we're experiencing, the far north, the Arctic, is warming roughly twice as rapidly as the mid-latitudes, such as the United States. That means that the temperature difference between the Arctic and the mid-latitudes is shrinking. And that temperature difference is what drives what is called the circumpolar vortex, which is the great counterclockwise swirling mass of cold air that hovers over the Arctic. As the temperature difference between the Arctic and the mid-latitudes declines, the polar vortex weakens, and it becomes wavier. The waviness means that there can be increased, larger excursions of cold air southward, that is into the mid-latitudes, and in the other phase of the wave, increased excursions of relatively warmer mid-latitude air into the far north. Computer models tell us that there are many different factors influencing these patterns. And, as in all science, there will be continuing debate about exactly what is happening. But I believe the odds are that we can expect, as a result of global warming, to see more of this pattern of extreme cold in the mid-latitudes and some extreme warm in the far north. So he's saying that the air in the Arctic is warm and the ice is melting, but for some reason when that air comes down to the United States, it gets extremely cold. Let's take a look at this diagram. Not the part with the handsome fellow on the left, but the part with the wavy jet stream on the right. John Holdren says this wavy jet stream is caused by global warming. And here's the same diagram from the March 1st, 1975 edition of Science News. But instead of blaming the wavy jet stream on global warming, they were blaming it on global cooling in the coming ice age, with glaciers plowing through downtown Manhattan. In that same article, they showed this graph from the National Academy of Sciences, which showed dramatic cooling in the Northern Hemisphere since the 1930s. This was from the November 1977 edition of National Geographic, during the winter of 1976-1977, Buffalo, New York got buried under 10 feet of snow. And National Geographic blamed it on the wavy jet stream. 
In 1978, the New York Times explained that the expansion of the polar vortex was caused by global cooling. But now the New York Times says the expansion of the polar vortex is caused by global warming. The Washington Post said that bitterly cold temperatures in the United States were caused by a wrecked polar vortex, which was caused by global warming. But in 1971, the Washington Post said that all the cold air was evidence of a coming ice age, which could be as little as 50 or 60 years away. In 1974, Time magazine wrote this. Scientists have found other indications of global cooling. For one thing, there's been a noticeable expansion of the great belt of dry, high-altitude polar winds, the so-called circumpolar vortex. National Geographic now says that the polar vortex is caused by global warming. But in 1977, they explained that this wavy jet stream was coincident with lower global temperatures. I have to admire the resourcefulness of climate alarmists. They're able to recycle their old global cooling diagrams and use them once again 40 years later to explain global warming. John Holdren has been playing the same game for a long time. In 1974, him and his partner Paul Ehrlich from Stanford University predicted a new ice age due to the burning of fossil fuels. In 1975, Holdren was quite openly talking about shutting down the U.S. energy supply. He wrote, The United States is threatened far more by the hazards of too much energy too soon than by the hazards of too little too late. And he wrote this right in the middle of a terrible fuel shortage in the United States. This article from 1969 showed the true agenda. His partner Paul Ehrlich, the New York Times, and the United Nations were talking about poisoning the food and water supply of third world countries. This never had anything to do with climate. It was always about reducing population. Toto's been pulling back the curtain on this evil for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Tokian Upla on the web at realclimatescience.com.